Records are made to be broken, and no better proof for that old adage has been the 2007 Major League Baseball season. Hi, I'm Amber Wilson, and welcome to Fantasy Baseball Weekly here on CBS Sportsline. We've had a 3,000th hit, a couple of 500 homers, a 300 winner, and of course, the incomparable Barry Bonds so far this season. But who's to say we're done writing records? With his second consecutive complete game shutout, Arizona Diamondbacks ace Brandon Webb has set a club record for most consecutive scoreless innings with 33. That might not sound so historically significant due to the young age of the franchise, but this is a club that has featured four Cy Young award-winning campaigns and World Series co-MVPs in their pitching staff. Brandon Webb is still a long way away from Oral Hershiser's record of 59 innings, but Webb has been red hot as of late. He's won four straight decisions, giving up only five earned since the All-Star break. Bobby Jenks is as hot as any closer has ever been. He's retired 41 consecutive batters over his last 14 appearances. By retiring the Mariners in order on Sunday, Jenks tied Jim Barr's all-time record with one more out. He will hold the record all to himself. He's not let a batter reach since July 17th appearance at Cleveland, and since then has pitched the equivalent of more than one and a half perfect games, three at a time. Rick Enfield set a record in 2000 for most wild pitches in an inning during a postseason game that year with the Cardinals. His much-documented wildness led him from being a Rookie of the Year runner-up to only making 11 appearances for St. Louis on the mound over the next six years. In Week 19, Rick Ankiel was called up by the Cardinals, but this time as an outfielder, a switch he made after the 2004 season. At the time of his call-up, Ankiel led the Pacific Coast League in home runs with 34 for the AAA Memphis. And since his call-up, no one in the National League has more home runs than Rick Ankiel. He has been able to blast three in his first four games as a major league outfielder, and the Cards are 3-1 and one with him in the lineup. It's a great story that he has three home runs in his first 16 at-bats, but he also has struck out six times without drawing a single walk so far. From a 27-year-old virtual rookie in the outfield to a 19-year-old getting a lot of time for a contender in Arizona, Justin Upton has been producing big time for the D-backs. In his first four games in the bigs, Justin had multi-hit games in three of them. Of his 10 big league hits so far, seven of them have been for extra bases with three doubles, three triples, and a homer starting in right field for the front-running D-backs. And we welcome in senior fantasy baseball analyst Eric Mack to the program. And Emac, Rick Ankiel and Justin Upton, they probably weren't on the radar for most fantasy owners a few months ago. What should we make of them right now? Well, they should have been on your radar because on Thursday I write the prospect report and you must not be reading Thursday nights. Well, that's how I spend my Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Upton is a future star while Ankiel is a former future star. Both can help your fantasy team right now, especially in deeper leagues. But Ankiel is a lefty who probably will sit against left-handed pitching. The power is obvious, but he's a free swinger who'll be a streaky player for your fantasy team. Start him while he's hot and use that active reserve shuttle on him. Upton is more intriguing in my book. He's going to get every day at bats, and you've already seen what he can do with those. The game just seems to be too easy for that 19-year-old. Okay, and Ankiel and Upton are already up. They're already making an impact. But do you see anybody else coming up making an impact? Well, indeed, the Red Sox look like they're going to give the call to Clay Buckholz. Buckholz is arguably the best pitching prospect currently in the minors. And the Red Sox are looking at giving him a shot Saturday and Friday, or Friday's doubleheader. They don't want to start Josh Beckett and Kurt Schilling both that day for whatever reason. But that's good news for us because he'll get a sneak peek at Buckholz. He might even be able to earn a rotation spot if he has that great outing because John Lester and Tim Wakefield are both struggling right now. We love elite pitching prospects getting opportunities with top contenders with great offenses. And this looks like a week that it could happen with Clay Buckholz. Okay, and ankiel has got three home runs since his return. Another guy that made his return in Week 19 was Jason Giambi. He belted out two in his first three games. Eric, what do you make of the Yankees lineup? Well, I don't know what's going to happen. There's only one man that does, and that's Joe Torre. The Yankees have said Melky Cabrera will remain in center, mostly because Johnny Damon's defensive deficiencies. That means Damon and Giambi will share DH at bats until Giambi starts playing first, and that might not happen very much at all. Consider Damon far less intriguing now, but if you've been following him this season, he really doesn't deserve at-bats anyway. All right, and Week 19 was a tough one for some top-line catchers. Paul LaDuca and Michael Barrett head to the disabled list. What should fantasy owners do that have these guys over the next few weeks without them? Well, they used to be front-line starting catchers, but they probably did you a favor shutting it down until September. They haven't been very good. The backups, though, Josh Bard and Ramon Castro, are two of the best number two catch catchers in the league, mostly because of the pop in their bat. Castro has a back issue. But he and Bard should be getting full-time at-bats, and they're intriguing stopgaps in deeper leagues. 
We're talking about catchers, though, and you probably should just spend your time watching preseason fantasy preseason football games and working on your fantasy football draft. Catchers just don't matter that much. I like that. A fantasy baseball analyst <laughs> telling us to go watch football. But it's nice. just about catchers. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. That'll do it for us for now. Keep your mouth clicking right here on CBSSportsLine.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. And don't forget to come back Thursday for our weekly planner show. But for now, if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch. For Eric Mack, I'm Amber Wilson. Have a great week.